Hey team, welcome back to The Basics. Today we're going to talk about the 300 Blackout Zero. Um, how I chose it, why I chose it, and then we'll kind of cover my technique to help you guys find the perfect 300 Blackout Zero if you're running both supers and subs. So with that, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay guys, first things first, uh, we'll talk about the technique. Um, and just right off the bat, this isn't foolproof. This isn't completely tested out by me. I'll show you here in a second exactly what I have tested and what I haven't, but I think this is a pretty good place to start um, for you guys just to get like a general understanding of what the difference in drop will be between a supersonic 300 blackout round and a subsonic. So let's go ahead and get into it. This is how I uh, kind of messed around with it at first online, and then uh, the numbers seem to be pretty close for me. So uh, what I chose to do is um, I like Hornady's ballistic calculators. There's a bunch of other ones, JBM. Um, there's just a lot of good ballistic calculators out there. You could probably use a Kestrel. Um, it doesn't really matter. I just like Hornady because it's kind of easy. But the most important thing we're going to do, I've got two tabs here. I've got one for subs and one's for super. Um, and basically, you want to use just the standard uh, equation. You don't want to open it up to all the environmental factors and stuff. It doesn't really matter. Um, I picked 300 yards because that's kind of the top out range. You could probably do 400 if you wanted, but do intervals of 25 yards. Um, ballistic coefficient, I'm running with like a 0.3 for supers. Um, this isn't as precise as it could be, but again, I don't think it really matters. Velocity and bullet weight does though. So I'm, I'm using um, American Eagle. Uh, this is 150 grain. Uh, Bullet coming out at about 1,900 feet per second. Make sure you can see that. Um, if it's hard to see the numbers, I'll just talk through it. So this is 1,900 feet per second, 150 grains. Um, zero range. Now here's the thing that you want to do. You want to pick a very, very close zero range for both your supers and your subs. Um, and again, the reason for that is because that's the closest point where you can have the two rounds being essentially the same. And then all you're tracking after that is the difference between the two rounds. But if you pick a distance like a 50 yard zero for supers and a 50 yard zero for subs, there's a lot more of a difference back here that's going to throw off your numbers. So the closer you can get the numbers at the front, the better and more accurate the numbers uh, over here will be. So five yards for your zero range and then sight height, that's going to be dependent on your gun. Mine happens to be three inches. Uh, so go ahead and just do calculate. Um, and here's sort of the numbers that we're looking at. So I'll do the rest of this on paper because it's easier to see. But basically what you want to do is look over here and look at your range. And this is going to be specific for each person. My 300 blackout set up for home defense. Um, but I want it to have the ability to go out to about eh, 200. I was sort of interested at 300. But for me, mostly it's going to be inside of 50. So these are the numbers that I was focused on. If you're a hunter or if you're looking for, you know, sort of a cool battle rifle or something like that, you can go out as far as you want. Uh, but for this, we'll just stick between 0 and 300 yards. Um, I do 0, 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, and then I just go to 2, 250, 300 from there. So you're going to write down those ranges, and I've already got it on a sheet of paper. And then you're going to go through, and you're going to make one column is going to be subs. And you basically just take the, or supers in this case, you're just gonna take the trajectory and you're gonna write that down. So if you're zeroed at five yards, it's essentially height over bore, so you're gonna be below three inches, so don't worry about that. Just write 10.9 down, 24, 36.6, 48.3, and so on for all the different distances you want. Then on the left side of the page, you're gonna do the same thing, use the same distances, and then write the drop with your subs. Just write all those numbers down. Uh, when you do that, then you're kind of set up to make your comparison. So let's go ahead and cut over to the paper and I'll kind of walk the dogs uh, farther on this. All right, so here we have all of our numbers. Um, real quick, I'll just draw this out because it was harder to see with the pins. The reason you use the five yard zero is because this distance right here, this point and this point, that's essentially just your height over bore. That's your actual optic, your line of sight. And that's your bore. So this is going to end up being your, your bullet path. If you set a five yard zero, you're basically eliminating as much as possible the difference between the supers and the subs. And you're only dealing 
with the gun. Um, with this close in zero, these numbers that you're going to get out here are going to be much more representative of the true difference between the two. If you chose like a 50 yard zero out here um, and you put in one with supers and one with subs, the differences in between here is going to be way different between the two. Um, so the numbers out here aren't going to be as accurate. So this is basically what we're doing. When we look at these numbers, we're basically saying, okay, what is this? At 100 yards, what's the difference between a super and a sub? Regardless of the zero, because remember, this doesn't really matter. Uh, if I'm zeroed at 50 yards with a super, and I take it out to 100 yards, if this checks out, then the drop is going to be the same no matter what the zero is. Same thing, if I'm zeroed at 75 yards with a sub, then this difference, this number, should be about the same. So let's go ahead and look at the numbers. Um, just so you know what I'm dealing with. Okay, so what you're doing is you've got, again, I just pulled this from the internet. I have all my numbers that I wrote down for my subs at, at the different ranges, respectively. Then I did the same thing at the same distances. I wrote down those same numbers with supers. And then all you're doing, let's make sure I can focus on this. All you're doing is you're looking at the difference between these two numbers. So 10.4 and 10.9, that's about half an inch to an inch. Jumping down to 100, let's say, you're looking at 38.5 and 48.3, so that's about 10 inches. So all you're doing is just doing some simple uh, subtraction to get the difference. So again, theoretically, this is gonna be the difference at each of these ranges between the supers that I chose and the subs that I chose. And then you're gonna take these numbers and plug it into these equations that I'll talk about here in a second. And just a quick Disclaimer, I've only tested the, th the numbers up above this blue line. So these numbers for me, for my setup and my conditions, are tested. Everything between the blue and the red, uh, I think they're pretty close. My numbers are different than the numbers that I got before. Um, but I would say the numbers that you're going to get out of your calculator here are going to be pretty close. Uh, I would say within a few inches. Um, again, not exact, but I don't think that there's a whole lot of factors that are going to change the bullet's flight path dramatically out to about 150 yards. Once you get below this red line though, um, I think these are just ballpark numbers. The differences I think will be enough to show you like if you want a gun that's going to take your 300 blackout with both subs and zeros out to like 400 yards, you're going to see okay this one's better because it gives me a smaller disparity between the two zeros than or the two rounds than another. So again these are sort of ballpark these are, I think, better estimates. Like these are easier and probably more quality numbers. And then these are actually tested for me. So with that said, let's talk about this. Now, again, this is my actual zero and like what I'm actually using. There's other stuff out there, but if you follow this technique, you should be able to plug and play with these numbers. And then essentially all you're doing is picking a zero that you think might work you know, 75, whoops, 75 or 25 or 50 with supers. And then you're just taking these numbers and you're either adding or subtracting depending on what round you're using to get your drop. So quickly to explain that, for this one, I'm actually using a 25 yard zero with subs. So you put that into your ballistic calculator and you get your drop for your subs. And if remember, garbage in, garbage out. So if you put in all of your numbers bad, uh, these numbers won't matter as much in the closer ranges, but once you get out farther, then they will matter. So make sure you put in good info. But these numbers are gonna be pretty legit. Because again, you're making a legitimate zero on the ballistic calculator with this ammunition. So what you do is you kind of plot it out. Okay, so 25 yards zero with subs, I'm gonna be dead on, of course. 50 yards, I'm gonna be about inch high, that's right here. Um, 75 yards. I'm going to be about 0.2 inches low. So essentially you're zeroed at both 25 and 75 yards. Whoops, that's over here. Uh, with subs. And then at 100 yards, you're about 3 inches low. Um, so that is the zero that you're actually working off of. Now to get your estimated difference with your supers, all you do is you go back to these numbers and you say, okay, I'm only working out to 100 yards. So um, I'm working... And you're looking at, at 25, you're going to be about 0.5 to an inches high. So I put about an inch high there. Uh, for 50, I'm 2 to 3 inches high. So if I'm 1 inch high with supers, 
two to three inches. When I did the numbers before, it was like three to four inches. So I've got four here. At 75, I'm essentially at zero. And these numbers say five to six. Before when I did it, it said six to seven. So I put seven here. And then at 100 yards, it says 10 inches. Before it said about uh, 13, I think. So I'm about negative uh, or, or minus three inches low with supers at 100, or sorry, subs at 100. So with supers, I'm gonna be you know 0.9 or plus nine high. So you just kind of draw those out and you can then kind of see what your disparity looks like. If your point of aim is here, this is where your sub bullet's gonna go and this is where your super is gonna go. Super being pink, sub being blue. So to look at the numbers a different way, if I'm shooting the gun with, a, with subs and the zero is for the subs, so again, this is zero to 25 yards with subs, here's all my drop with subs. If I take a magazine out and fill it with supersonics and I shoot at the same distances with the same point of aim, then this is what I'm gonna be. At zero, I'm gonna be about three inches high because that's your uh, you know, height over bore. But again, same number as I said before, about an inch high at 50, I'm gonna be about four, 75, about seven inches, and then at 100, I'm gonna be about nine. So you can see the breakdown with the numbers here, and then visually you can see the numbers uh, a little bit better here. Um, so to kind of explain what I'm going for again, I'm looking for a really good home defense weapon. So ideally, I want something that's gonna work best inside of 25 yards. So if I'm training with subs or supers, I want there to be as small as a, as a difference inside of 20 yards between those two rounds as possible so that my training's gonna be consistent. Um, additionally, if that's all I have, if I just can't find subs or I just wanna use supers or whatever the case is, I don't have to go out and re-zero it. I can just go out, use both types of ammo, and I want that distance to be as small as possible. The problem with this zero, if you look at it, is there's a greater disparity between the two than the 50 yard zero with subs. So we'll talk about that in a minute. If you're shooting supers, a 25 yard sub zero equals about a 18 yard super zero. And there's no easy way to find this. I just kind of had to play with the numbers. I don't even remember how I did it, but if you guys are smart, you can probably figure it out. So what that means is, if the supers are zeroed at 18 yards, that means inside of 18 yards are gonna be low, they're gonna be dead on at 18, and then they're gonna be high at 25, about an inch high. But if I'm shooting subs, they're all gonna be low until I get out to 25. So if I want pinpoint accuracy, you know, like if you're looking for a good T-zone hit inside of 25 yards, I'm gonna to have to deal with a little bit more disparity because of this. I'm gonna to have to have different holdovers and unders depending on the exact distance and ammo that I'm shooting. So, you know, if, if you were just worried about chest shots, like you could totally make this work, especially if you like some of the numbers out here, but we'll talk about that in a second. For me, I wanted to be able to say, no joke, I wanna know exactly where my bullet's going inside of 25 yards. And so this, for me, didn't work all that well. Um, and then another thing that I wanted, in addition to a solid zero to 25 yard holdover game, was the ability to take this thing out to 100 yards pretty easily on just like a torso size target. In addition to a home defense rifle, I think it'd be just a good, you know, regional bug out gun or just something I could grab in case I just wanted something a little bit better uh, or more capable rather than a pistol. So if I'm trying to engage, and I mean, even 100 yards is a stretch legally, you know, like, could you really say that you were in fear for your life and you couldn't escape if the guy was 100 yards away? I think that's kind of a good top out, especially out in Colorado or some place where you have more distance. You could probably argue 100. Um, but anyways, out to 100, you can see there's a pretty big disparity. If you're aiming right at the chest, uh, you're going to be about three inches low with subs. So that's not bad. That's essentially point of aim, point of impact on a torso size target. But if you have to shoot supers, now you're about nine inches high, uh, which, you know, depending on the size of the target and if you're holding dead center, you could easily miss by either either side of the ears or completely over the head if you aim if you pull it high. Um, and even here at, at 75 yards, you're about seven inches high to essentially a zero, uh, a 75 inches, uh, 75 yards sub zero. Sorry. So these kind of these two numbers I didn't like very much. Is it doable? Yes, absolutely. Um, would this zero be better if you wanted like? 
a two to 300 yard gun? Yeah, I think so, because this is gonna start to drop a little bit, and this is gonna drop off more, but you're gonna have the point of aim is gonna be much more in the middle as you get farther out. So again, maybe like the two to 300 yard line, this zero would work really well for. That's something you can go back and plug in all these numbers to your calculators and go from there. For me, I wasn't really messing with this. Um, I thought that nine inches at 100 yards was a bit too much of a hold under to get a consistent hit. Um, so I kind of scrapped this idea, especially when you look at a 50 yard zero with the subs. So uh, let's just draw this just to make sure we're, we're clear. So a 50 yard zero with subs, uh, 25 yards, you're gonna be about half an inch low. At 50, you're dead on. At 75, you're about an inch and a half low. At 100, you're five inches low. And then just for kicks and giggles, for 150 yards, you're about 19 inches low. Um, so that's about a foot and a half, all right? Now, if you, again, you're shooting subs and it's zeroed to subs. So if you switch mags and you put in a full mag of supers and you shoot at the same targets with the same point of aim, at 25 yards, you're gonna be about 0.5 inches high. At 50 yards, you're gonna be about three inches high. 75 yards, five and a half inches high. And then 100 yards, you're gonna be seven and a half inches high. Uh, and then this equates to a 22 yard zero if you're interested. Now what that looks like practically is we come over here. Here is your zero at 50 yards. So if you shoot at a 50 yard target with your subs, with a sub zero, you're gonna be dead on. You're gonna be three inches high with supers, which is pretty good, I think. Um, knowing 50 yards, chest shot, easy, three shots. And then even if you needed a precise impact, if that's something you're interested in at 50 yards, a three inch hold under isn't that hard to deal with. Um, the thing that I really like about this zero is what you get inside of 25 yards. So at 25, again, you're gonna be about half an inch low with subs and about half an inch high with supers. So to me, half an inch is essentially zero for me. Um, now, if you're like real picky about zeros and like depending on what kind of shooting you're doing, yeah, you might not like that. But for me, half an inch isn't gonna give you that much disparity. So essentially, you've got a zero for both rounds at 25 yards, um, especially if you're just worried about center mass, chest hits, that's definitely good enough to be considered your zero for both supers and subs. Um, and then you've got a more refined sub zero at 50, but again, half an inch low, half an inch high for chest shots, I'll take that all day long. The reason that this shines is when you get inside of 25 yards, you've now got a 22 yard zero. So you're much closer when you talk about when the super round is gonna come up and meet your point of aim and then go above it. So you're really only talking about three yards where you're gonna have a little bit of disparity versus up here we have about seven yards, all right? So inside of 22 yards, both rounds are gonna be below your line of sight, which is essentially you just your height over bore. Now, if you remember my AR-15-0 video, that's what I really was shooting for, um, literally and figuratively. So really, if you're shooting for like a five by five inch circle, and I kind of, I've messed up the math a couple times, or a five by five inch square, or maybe like a T-zone, you know, maybe four, four by two, let's say. And you're, you know, CQB home defense, and you really want that good center T-zone hit. Um, inside of, you know, zero to 15 yards or so, all you have to do is be aware of this height over bore. So just aim three inches above the target, and you're gonna be hitting center mass all day long. Now, this is the best zero because that's the same, that height over bore is gonna be the same for both supers and subs. That's why I chose it. You are gonna have a little bit of disparity between your holdovers between zero to 15 to 25, but if you're worried about that, just hold point of aim, and then you're either gonna be three inches low or inside of that, out to 25. But if you want that refined point of aim inside of 15 or so, it's gonna be the same thing for supers and subs. So you can train for both. It's gonna be a smaller disparity with this than it is with this. And then again, as you creep out past 15 and go to 25, 
realistically, I'm not going to be trying to take a center mass, like really precise T-zone shot outside of that distance anyways. So past 10, 15 yards, it's all going to be center mass chest shots, uh, which will be easy. No matter what distance I'm at, especially 10 to you know 25 yards, it's going to be point of aim, and I'm either going to be two to three inches low or you know right on like negative 0.5 or positive 0.5, depending on the ammo. But it's going to be a really easy shot for a 5x5 five five square. All of them are going to be right there in that square. 25 yards, easy. Point and shoot, you're going to be zeroed. 50 yards, you're zeroed with the subs, and you're only about three inches high with supers, so it's not too bad. When you get out to 75 yards, uh, it's still pretty good. I mean, you're going to be about an inch and a half low with supers, so again, as far as a good center mass shot in the chest, that's not an issue. And then about five inches high uh, with your super. Um, so again, out to 75 yards, this is still pretty much point of aim, point of impact, generally speaking, on a chest size target. Um, and as long as you do your part, your bullets are going to land within six inches of each other. And then even out to 100 yards, five inches, again, it's sort of that same number, you're low with supers, and you're only about seven to eight inches high with subs. So again, as long as you know, like, okay, I'm getting out closer to that 100-yard line, aim a little lower with supers, aim a little higher with subs, you're still going to be able to get those good chest shots. You know, maybe not a 5x5 five five target, but, you know, a 10x10 uh, 10 10 chest or something like that. Um, definitely doable with this zero. Now, again, your desirable, like, max range with this isn't going to be quite as good with this zero. Um Again, this is probably good out to like two or 300 yards. This one might may only make sense out to like 150, 200. Um, maybe three would be like the maximum edge of this because at that point you've just got too much drop. Um, but again, that's that's not what this gun, at least in my opinion, is designed for. This 300 black, the way I have it set up, is designed for home defense, C CQB type stuff. So 100 yards for me is really quite ideal. Um, again, if you're like a hunter or you just want a 300 black for longer distance stuff, then you, and you want to shoot both supers and subs, then yeah, I would look at something more like this. If you only want to shoot one, then that's easy. Just plug in your ballistic numbers into a calculator, and you can do that analysis all day long. But if you want the capabilities of both, just understand, just like with a 2230, if you've got, you know, the, the, the U.S. Army Zero, for instance, 25 meters, that's your line of sight. 25 meters and about 300. I'm just estimating here. You're zeroed roughly here and you're zeroed roughly here. Um, again, give or take a few inches, but generally speaking, these are what the numbers show. You actually, you're actually a little bit lower here, but you're going to be high in between. Okay? You're going to be low here and you're going to be low here. And they picked this zero because they said most combat engagements happen within this distance. So this isn't designed to be like a real precision-based zero. This is designed to say, okay, if we have our regular Joes out there and they're in the stressful combat scenario, we want to teach them to aim here and inside of 300 yards, all of the bullets are going to hit here, center mass. That's what this zero is designed for. It, it gets you out to three, four, 500 yards pretty good. But again, if you're trying to get a, a center shot here, you're, there's just a lot more disparity between the different drops. That's kind of what this zero is for the 300 black, a 50 yard zero. Um, it, it still gives you pretty good precision potential inside of 25, but then once you get past that, it's pretty much a center mass zero. This 25 yard line, uh, 25 yard sub zero, is much more like the 100 yard zero where you have line of sight. Whoops, I'm a terrible artist. 100 yards, you're dead on with the 223 with the 100 yard zero. And then inside of that, yeah, you're going to creep up closer and closer and closer. But inside of that, you're essentially just your height over pour. So you aim about three inches above the target, and your bullet is going to impact right on target. This is a great CQB zero because it's little to no thinking inside of 100 yards. And then past 100 yards, you just need to know your general hold holdovers. Um, you're not going to get out 
and get as much distance out of it. But again, 100 yards, maybe out to 100, 200 yards, uh, you don't have that much disparity, which is why this is a great zero for like a home defense type setup. Okay, guys, I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. I hope it made sense. Feel free to ask me questions um, if you were confused on something or, or if the video in general just was confusing, let me know. I'll try and reshoot it. Um, as far as specific questions, like I said, it's a technique that I use just to get some general ballpark numbers to start messing around with some zeros to compare subs and supers. So I encourage you to do the same, mess around with it, figure out what you want the gun to do first, what the goal is for the gun, what you'd like to be able to do with both supers and subs. Are you gonna shoot supers more, subs more? That's gonna help you refine and figure out what zero you actually need. Um, once you have that, then as you're doing your comparisons, it's gonna make a little bit more sense as to which zero you should actually choose. Um, but for me, I'm gonna stick with the 50 yard zero with the subs for now. And uh, maybe in a future video, we'll actually go out and do some testing at those different distances. And then especially out farther, to see how far you can actually push a 50 yard zero with both subs and supers. So stay tuned guys, appreciate your views and hope y'all are doing well. God bless.